Hey, this is Chris Miles here, Anti-Financial Advisor. Hey, I want to share with you something that I just saw online, actually by a friend, Chris Noggle. Great guy, by the way. Great, teaches great stuff about infinite banking. But there's something he's teaching here that I really want to clarify because everybody's asking me, and even recently said, well, now that interest rates are higher, should I buy a car using my infinite banking? But I want to go to this video, and hey, maybe we'll promote my friend Chris's video a little bit more. Uh, but I want to go to this video because he teaches some great principles about infinite banking. However, there are some things that I would like to clarify and possibly even tell you, no, don't do this. The first thing you see here, right? Um, no, he's going through, he's talking about how this all works, about whether to buy a car with it. He's talking about having your own privatized bank, AKA cash value inside your life insurance policy using whole life. If you haven't heard of this concept before, I definitely recommend you go look at our other videos in our playlist on Money Ripples. We got a whole infinite banking playlist. We talk about this concept. He really just kind of explains this really for the first half of the video, how it all works. Now, I want to go in a little bit because he, he, there's a few things I want to point out. First of all, this. Cash value is, now that we understand that we're designing it so that you have access to more cash value immediately. And how do we do that? Now, this is important to know, and I'm not going to waste a lot of time. When we design it, we put the lowest death benefit on for the highest cash value, which reduces our commissions. So remember earlier you said these are high commission products that pay the agent a bunch of commissions? Not these ones. Because... Now, he's describing exactly what we talk about here, which is lowest death benefit needed to allow an X amount of number, number of dollars to go in. Now, he's going to say here that's like 60 to 90 percent of cash value goes in the first year, meaning, as he's going to explain, 10 to 40 percent goes in. Now, I know from seeing the policy that people have sent us, many of you saying, hey, I got a policy from these guys. What can you do? Um, and he's going to be right. He's going to describe how if it's 90 percent of your money is going to cash value, it's because we're cutting down our commissions by 90%. That's generally true. However, um, the one thing I'll tell you with the 90% design that he's referring to, it's the same one that we can do as well. It actually costs you more money uh, after the first year. So it ends up happening after like four or five years, it's losing to other policies, including its own. It's actually a mass mutual policy. So it's already losing to its own policy. So when he says we've cut back our commissions by 90%, that's a half truth. Yes, in the first year, that's true. But you get paid more year after year after that. It just spreads the cost out longer. So be careful of this kind of stuff. Don't just trust what it is in the first year. I know that they tend to lean towards the 60% design. Why do they do that? Because the company pays them more, even more than what we get paid on our policies. And it just, it just costs you more. It doesn't make it any better for you at all. Um, so usually they go the 60% route, but they're just saying they have a range. They have the option to do it, but usually they default to the 60% side. Now, here's what he's talking about doing. He's saying you've got $40,000 of cash. You can just see here, you put $40,000 with the bank there, and then you're going to use $30,000 of that to go invest. Now, he says in this video here, he even says, I'm not going to time market because I'm trying to do this really quick and to the point. You guys can watch the video yourselves, boost up his ratings while you're watching mine. Um, but the, the $40,000, if you put in $40,000, you will not have $40,000. Like he said, if, if it's only, say, 60% available, that means you probably put in over $60,000, so then you could have $40,000 in there, okay? So just be aware that that's another thing that's very confusing when I watch this video is that it makes it sound like you put in $40,000, you got $40,000, but we're only going to use thirty. dollars The reason he uses the number thirty is because at best, he's likely probably only, you're probably only going to be able to access $30,000 of it. So he's just saying if you have $40,000 in actual cash value after the fees have been taken out, then you're borrowing thirty dollars to buy this car. So here's the concept, right? With infinite banking is, do you go and get financing through the bank and get $30,000 to buy, to be able to borrow, to buy that car? Or do you use your own privatized bank with infinite banking to do that? And he's talking about death benefit, but, but here's the part that really, that really is so important. So right here, I'm going to kind of go into where he's explaining this about what you do. There is loan interest on that, that, that money you're borrowing from the insurance company too. So remember, you're always paying interest. You pay interest on the money, whether you borrow from the bank or from the insurance company, which acts as the bank. Very important distinction because it kind of gets glossed over a little bit here. But let me show you what he's explained with how to pay for this loan if you use your life insurance. To buy a $30,000 car at 5% interest, because that's what we're doing. We're buying a $30,000 car. We're assuming that the interest rate is 5% on that car, and we're going to finance it for five years. Just go with me. So here's what he's saying to do. If you were to go to a bank today and you were to get a five-year car loan at 5%, you would be paying $566 per month. What he's saying is do the same thing here. Instead of paying the bank, 
pay it back to your own privatized bank, right? Pay it back towards that life insurance line of credit that you have, that loan that you have. Now, here's the problem. He'll make it sound like you're paying yourself back. He'll even say all $566 goes back into your policy. That is false, okay? Just like the bank, when you pay interest, you're paying principal and interest on that loan, you're doing the same thing on the life insurance loan. They're charging you daily interest on that loan with the life insurance loan. So even if you pay 5 to 6, 66, yes, it brings the balance down by $566, but that's after it already charged up some interest, just like it would have done on a bank loan. Really, if there was a bank loan at 5% and you were borrowing from the policy at 5%, which I know a lot of them are now charging more than 5% currently, if you were to do that, you would still be paying this same amount of interest, okay? The same. Here's the saving grace, and he mentions this early in the video. The difference is if you pull $30,000 out of, out of your savings account and you use that to buy your car outright in cash, out of $40,000 that's sitting there, you're now only left with $10,000 to earn interest. But if you use your life insurance policy, that $40,000 is still in there growing tax-free compounding interest. Uh, he mentioned, by the way, that Einstein said it was the eighth one of the world. Einstein never said compounding interest is the eighth one of the world. He mentioned compounding numbers, but you only find that on financial advisor sites. It's been misquoted so much. Uh, Einstein never talked about financial interest, compounding interest being the eighth one of the world. So interesting thing, but I know it's commonly taught. Uh, so anyways, the 40,000 is all earning interest while you have a line of credit that's charging you interest for that $30,000. Yes, take the payment, do that. I agree with this wholeheartedly. But the question is, is this the right time to do it? Because remember, this is the key point. You remember nothing else, right? Remember this one thing. You are always, always paying interest. You're either paying interest to a bank, just like the insurance company or a bank, or you have a lost opportunity cost. Because if you use pay cash for something, if you pay cash for that, you lose the ability to earn interest on that money. So you're always paying interest. The key is, which one costs you least? Because... Even if I could, if I could say, for example, say I was the same interest rate, I can go get a bank loan at say five and a half percent, and then I can borrow from my life insurance policy at five and a half percent. People would say, well, I'll just pay myself. And granted, if you want something that's not on your credit score, you want something that is not a forced payment because the bank will force you to pay that. And if you don't pay them, you get a late on your credit and eventually they would repossess, repossess your car. So there's some safety in the sense of using your own cash, which is just like buying with cash but you're creating a little bit more leverage. By paying it back, here's the deal. You don't really come out ahead, okay? You don't come out ahead at all. In fact, you'll come out the same, in some cases, depending on the insurance company, worse than if you actually went and did it this way, okay? This is why. There's not to, taking out insurance costs, right? The one thing that happens is that some insurance companies will pay you less interest on the money you borrow. Uh, even the ones that we prefer to use, they will adjust the interest rate. So they'll still pay you on all of that money, but they might pay you two different interest rates. Uh, for example, one company will charge you 5.7% for the loan. And on that portion that you borrowed, they'll pay you 5.05% in tax-free dividends. Now the remainder, the part that's not being leveraged, they'll pay you the 5.75, the full dividend rate, but they'll still create a spread there. You can still come out ahead in general than just paying cash for a car. I will say this, you can still come out ahead using this strategy because you're getting paid on the money that's in there and the compounding effect of that interest you're being paid is more than the simple interest that you're paying down on that loan. But that's true with the bank. It's the same exact calculations and numbers, no difference. So here's what my rule is. Um, one, if I can get money from the bank, I'm gonna borrow it from the bank, especially if it's cheap money. Yes, car loans, even if they're, I check my credit unions showing six and a quarter percent, that's higher than what I can get with my insurance company at 5.7 with one of those policies. But I would still get the loan from the bank. Why? Because one reason was what I mentioned where they'll pay a little bit different dividend rate, that 0.65% spread that, that I'm paying on that loan, you add that to the 5.7, that still puts that at about 6.35%. That's still higher. But even if it were the same, and maybe if it was just a little bit more that I was paying to the bank, I would still do it because I'm an investor. And when I take my money, I want to use my money for things the banks won't give me money for. For example, if I want to put a down payment on a real estate property, I'm going to put that down payment on that property because I can't borrow that money, right? I mean, I'm not talking about getting lines of credit, home equity lines of credit. I mean, you're going to have to put cash down as a down payment 
and then borrow the rest, the other 80% or 75% from the mortgage company. For that money, I'm going to use my policy because I can buy assets with it. I'm not going to buy a depreciating asset, a car with that. Now, granted, if I start seeing car loan rates get up to, I'd say, at least 7 or 8%, now I'll be considering using this, assuming that the loan rates of the life insurance haven't gone up as well. If they go up and they go up with, with the banks, which they usually don't, they move more slowly. But if they do, I'm not doing that method. It just doesn't make sense. So don't believe for one second you're watching this video that somehow there's some magic happening that you're paying a different interest rate than you would to the bank. That's not the case. They are the bank. The insurance company is the bank. The key is I want to make sure that if I'm going to be paying interest, if I'm going to be using my policy, it better be used to save me more money. So if it's going to save me a significant amount of interest versus I could use that money and go and invest with it and make more interest anyways, that's what I have to weigh out. What's the opportunity cost versus what they're charging me for the interest? And that's going to be different for everybody. But I know for me personally, I would want to see those loan rates on the car loans go up to about 8% or so before I'd say, all right, maybe I'll use my policy now because I'd rather pay a lower interest rate, just pay it back. And then I can use that money to invest as after I've paid it back. That's the big thing. So right now in the current environment, again, early 2023, I think you should not buy a car using your life insurance uh, unless you're a gambler. If you're going to blow your money anyways, maybe this is the best way to go. Um, but I really do believe that if you're going to use this, use it wisely. Use it in a way that makes logical sense and understand that, again, you're not paying yourself back when you pay back to life insurance. You are paying the insurance company's loan back, which frees up more cash to be able to leverage and borrow again down the road. So that's the key thing I want you to understand. And by the way, when he talks about well-designed policies, amen, Chris, I couldn't agree with you more. You and I are in the same camp there. Again, I'm not trying to beat up on, on Chris Noggle's video here because again, great guy. He's a guy I look up to um, in, in what I see here, especially with YouTube and the things he's doing. I love it. Uh, but I would just say for clarity purposes, be able to create more clarification. I would not be using this to buy a car right now because I have great credit and I have investment opportunities. If you don't have those two things, this could be a great strategy to use. And so use it. All right. So that's my two cents there. Don't believe that buying a house with this or buying a car, the traditional infinite banking method is something that us as investors who understand money really do, right? We don't do that. We only leverage this for things that we know will make us more money than the other option. So for me, my mantra is borrow as much cheap money from the bank as I can. And then for money I can't get from the bank for cheap, that's when I use my policy. Oh, hey, if you guys have any questions, you can always visit our website, moneyripples.com. Reach out to us there. Talk to you later.